Hello my babes and welcome to another informational video. This video is dedicated entirely to your shoulders. The delts don't get the same amount of attention as some other larger body parts. Those muscles often steal the show and they crowd out those little caps that cover your arms so beautifully. But it's time we stop underrating the delts. They truly round out an impressive physique, they accentuate other body parts by creating pleasing proportions, and it's no less appropriate to do shoulder-focused accessory training when you're training for strength than it is to train any other body part. When training the shoulders, we want to consider regional anatomy, fatigability, and the strength curves of specific exercises. These factors largely determine how we most efficiently train for strong three-dimensional shoulders. Let's first begin by talking about anatomy. The deltoid is divided into three main parts, the anterior, the middle or lateral, and the posterior or rear. The anterior head originates from the clavicle, the lateral head originates from the acromion, that's on the top of the scapula or your shoulder blade, and the posterior head originates from the spine of the scapula. All of these three heads converge and insert on the humerus at the deltoid tubercle. All of these three heads are involved in shoulder abduction. The anterior head also horizontally adducts the arm and contributes to internal rotation. The posterior head horizontally abducts and externally rotates. And the three heads of the deltoid are therefore challenged differently in different movements. It has been suggested that the deltoid actually includes up to seven independent functional units. These functional units cannot be contracted totally independently, but will be loaded slightly differently through different movements. These functional units cannot be contracted totally independent, but will be loaded slightly differently through different movements. This means the deltoids likely respond best to a variety of exercises and not just one for each head. Shoulder flexion, extension, and abduction exercises should all be included. Next, let's talk about using internal moment arms to inform exercise selection. What is an internal moment arm? It's the distance between the muscle acting on a joint and the joint itself. A large moment arm means that the muscle can create more force through better leverage on the joint. So the goal is to find those exercises that create large internal moment arms for the deltoids to be challenged. The anterior and middle heads of the deltoid have both shoulder flexion moment arms. These moment arms are the longest when the arms are raised in front of the body like in a front raise or when the arms are overhead, like in an overhead press. A dumbbell overhead press with the elbows to the side will target both the anterior and middle heads of the deltoid, roughly equally. Now the posterior head has a shoulder extension moment arm, which is greatest when the arms are at the side, like for example, in a horizontal row. But unlike the lats who also extend the shoulders, the delts maintain a meaningful extension moment arm, even at very high degrees of shoulder flexion. So exercises like pullover can also train the posterior heads of the deltoids. Now the middle delt has a significant shoulder abduction moment arm. The anterior delt kicks in to assist with shoulder abduction as the arm moves further away from the body. To focus on the middle head of the delt, it's a better idea to do lateral raises only to about shoulder height. That is the position where its moment arm is the longest as well as the external moment arm of the weight on the hand. The anterior delt works in horizontal adduction, sometimes called horizontal flexion, along with the pec major. So exercises like dumbbell flies will preferentially target the anterior deltoid at the bottom of the movement. The posterior delt has the opposite moment arm. So exercises like reverse flies will preferentially target the posterior delt at the top. Next, let's talk about strength and resistance curves. Many exercises that train the deltoids involve steep descending strength curves. This means that the exercises are very challenging at the top. Many more exercises have an ascending strength curve, meaning that they are more challenging at the bottom of the movement. We can occasionally use cables to flatten out the strength curve of an exercise, like a lateral raise, and challenge the delt through more of its range of motion. More tension at the bottom creates more tension through the passive elements of the middle and anterior heads of the delt, which can help better leverage stretch mediated hypertrophy in those particular regions. Next, let's talk about training considerations. When you organize the training of a particular movement or a muscle group, you wanna consider its susceptibility to muscle damage, which is muscle specific. Muscle damage is influenced by many things like activation, fiber type, and working sarcomere lengths or length tension relationship of a muscle. 
more activation equals more damage, more fast switch fibers equal more damage, and longer working sarcomere lengths also equal more damage since tension at long muscle lengths damages fibers more than tension at shorter muscle lengths. Since the deltoid group is made up of small muscles, its activation potential is relatively high. The delt is likely a relatively slow twitch muscle and slow twitch muscle fibers are less sensitive to muscle damage, but the middle and anterior heads are active at long muscle lengths, while the posterior head is not. So the deltoids are not particularly susceptible to muscle damage, especially when compared to muscles like the hamstrings, for example. So a typical guideline would, would apply. 10 to 20, or approximately 10 to 20 sets per week with no more than five sets of failure at any given training day. Frequency is more about what works for you, but a bit higher frequency approach, so three or four times per week with lower volume per session might be better if you really wanna maximize productive weekly volume. All right, now let's get into the workout. The first exercise that we're gonna do is a dumbbell overhead press. You can do it with a barbell as well. I actually prefer to do it with a barbell if especially if you're gonna do use this exercise as your as your main movement for the day so you're gonna do five sets of five at a challenging weight whatever you can do for five sets of five next we're gonna target the posterior portion of the shoulder and we're gonna use a horizontal row all right next we're gonna target the middle deltoid and we're gonna do so by doing lateral races you want to do these to about shoulder height because that is the most, that's the position where the moment arm is the longest. And so that's where it's gonna be challenged the most. And finally, we're gonna do some exercises for the anterior delt through doing some dumbbell flies, which will target the front part of your shoulder, mainly at the bottom of the movement. For each of these movements, we're gonna do four sets of 10 to 12 repetitions and choose a challenging weight, a weight that you can complete all of the sets with. So there you have it. That is the science of the shoulders. Hopefully you got something out of this video, maybe something that you weren't expecting, and now you can hit the knowledge and confidence that you know what it takes to build three-dimensional shoulders. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you really liked, like, like, liked this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you really liked, like, 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 liked this video and myself, maybe head over to the hyperperformancemethod.com store and uh, get yourself a strength training program that will clearly get you 3D delts, delts that are strong and functional and healthy and get you the goals that you want. Also, before I leave, I wanna encourage you guys to check out our merch at hybridapparel.com. That's on the website. What's the website? Uh, hybridapparel.store. I should leave this in, this is pretty funny. <laughs> a hybrid apparel dot store that's where you find the sickest gear in the game sickest graphic tees that all come straight from our brain into our designers brain and then into our t-shirts they're very cool and different and you're gonna love them and finally we actually started a podcast about what two months ago no yeah about two months ago it's called hybrid unlimited where we talk about you guessed it an unlimited amount of topics ranging from health and fitness to current events, culture, politics, and just chat, talk. So it's as if you get a seat inside the hybrid office because it truly feels like you guys are here. So go check it out, I encourage you. This week we had Hayden's dad talking about wealth advisor, wealth advising, and talking about how anyone can potentially have a million dollars. That's pretty neat. Next week, we have Dr. Josiah Zayner, who is a genetic engineer, and we talk about uh, DNA and gene therapy for athletic performance and for health and longevity. So it's gonna be super interesting. Hope you guys like it. Remember, subscribe to the channel. Go on iTunes or Spotify or whatever it is that you listen to podcasts, subscribe there, buy apparel, buy training, whatever you want. If not, it's totally cool too. And as always, see you guys next time. Bye.